All right, so problem 80, we have a left Riemann sum, a right Riemann sum, and a trapezoidal sum are used to approximate the value of the integral from zero to one of f of x. So each of them are gonna use the same number of subintervals. And here's the graph. And we wanna determine which of these sums will give you an underestimation of this integral. Okay, so let's just draw like a um, picture of what this would look like. So um, a left Riemann sum, um, you're gonna make rectangles where the left end point of each rectangle will be on the function. So our first rectangle, it will be something like this. It would literally be a horizontal line. The next one would be like something like this. Third one followed by this. And this is the idea. So you're gonna get something like this. So you can see, just put this visual, that these graphs are underestimating the, um, the area of the actual you know, graph. So the left sum is gonna be an underestimation because again, these rectangles are all, all we say inscribed in the function. Now let's see a right sum. A right sum, you would have the right corner or the right end point of the rectangle be on the graph. So your first rectangle would be like, it would be this, like this black one. The second one will be like that, and like the third one like this, and so forth. See the right top, top right corner of each rectangle is on the actual function. So this actually overestimates it because see these, the areas of these rectangles, if I was to shade them in, would um, be more than the actual integral. So then this wouldn't be true. This would be an overestimation actually. Now for a trapezoidal sum, this might be a little actually, uh, Better if I kind of draw um, a zoomed in version to show you what's happening. So we have a graph here that's increasing, but it's concave down. So we have a curve that's going like this. Now remember the trapezoidal sum, you're literally making um, trapezoids, but you're connecting basically, let's see our first trapezoid, instead of connecting um, them, you know, whores with horizontal lines, like a rectangle, you're connecting them like diagonal. So this first rectangle will be, this first um, trapezoid will look like a triangle. Now the second one would be, you know, like something like this. And the third one will be something like that. Now it's hard to kind of see with this picture, so I'm gonna draw another one in just a second. But these are actually gonna be underestimating the, the, um, the graph because these are all gonna be underneath the, the, the curve. So if you just think about, Ge ge the, like like um geometrically or you know just logically a zoomed in trapezoid on a curve like this if i was to connect them with a straight line it would be a secant line and this secant line lies within or underneath the curve it's impossible to kind of make a secant line when a, when you have a concave down that would be above this curve if it was the other way around, if it went like this, then yeah. But since it's concave down, these trapezoids will underestimate the area because they're all going to be inside of it. So this will be also an underestimation. So one and three will be our answer. Or I guess D, D will be our answer. One and three only. All right, 81. The first derivative of the function f is given by f prime of x is equal to x minus 4e to the negative sine of 2x. How many points of inflection does the graph of f have on the interval from 0 to 2 pi? OK, I mean, the best way is probably just to graph this. And let's take a look at the graph. Um, now, let me just first remind um, or review. Remember, a point of inflection is when the derivative changes from increasing to decreasing or when it changes from decreasing to increasing. This is not the same as positive to negative or negative to positive. That's, com that's a common mistake, but it's, it's when it's changing its behavior, when it's changing from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. This is F prime. So let's, let's graph this and we wanna see on the graph where the behavior of the derivative changes. 
So let's graph this. Okay, so let me zoom out in the so we can see exactly what's going on on with this. All right, well, look at that. What a graph. So let's draw a sketch. We care from zero to two pi. So two pi is about 6.28. Just remember 6.2828. Since I already know, since I've already done this problem, you know, I know that that, that well, let me first draw the sketch. Let me let me redraw it over here because I uh, should have drawn it a little bit. I don't want it to get in the way of the other one. Okay, so what's going on here? You know, before uh, from zero before zero, it does this, and it goes like that, then it intersects it once, and it goes down again. And it goes back up, and, if, and this point over here is actually about 6.068. Oops. So that's about 6.068. How do I know this? Because I've done this problem already. Now, um, again, we don't care. It's not about whether it's, it's changed from positive to negative. That's when we're dealing with maximum or minimum. We want to see where it's changing from increasing to decreasing. So, so you can see up to here, the, the derivative is increasing and then it starts to decrease. So here's that inflection point. Now over here, it goes from decreasing then it starts to increase after. So here's the second inflection point. It keeps on increasing up to here and then decreases afterwards. Inflection point three decreases over here Increases afterwards, inflection point four. One, two, three, four. So there are four inflection points on this interval. So the answer is B. All right, 82. All right, if F is a continuous function on the closed interval, A to B, which is following, following must be true. Now, this is a weird problem. I'm not really even sure what they were trying to get at, but um. I guess they want to make sure you really know your um, theorems, meaning know the intermediate value theorem, IVT and mean value theorem. They're similar but different. But in either case, is your answer actually doesn't have to do with either of these. So the answer is not going to be E. Um, and again, I'll, I'll talk more about this in another problem. But um, let's just go through them. Oh, see, all it says is that f is a continuous function on this closed interval. All that means is that it has to connect. We don't know if they're positive. We don't know if it's negative. We don't even know if it's increasing or decreasing. For all we know, if that's a and that's b, it could be a horizontal line. That's possible because it doesn't even say it's increasing or decreasing. All the values could be the same on the interval. Now, this is just one possibility. It could do this. You could do this, it could, you could go back, it could oscillate. So it's not gonna be A necessarily. It's possible, but it's not necessarily A. It, you know, it says must be true keyword. So A doesn't have to be true. Same thing for um, B. Um, it doesn't have to change value. Maybe they're all the same values. So this, there doesn't have to be a value between A and B. Again, they all could be the same. It could be a horizontal line. So not B. C. There's a number in the closed interval such that f of c is greater than or equal to x or f of x for all x in this closed interval. Now, this is this is a thing. It says greater than or equal to. Um, I mean, this yeah, like it it could that that that's possible, but um, that the thing is, is it says or equal to. So the fact that it says or equal to like makes that, yeah, that, that has to be true or has to be, um, it has to be, you know, greater than like, it, like it doesn't, it, it's, I, again, I'm not really even sure what they're trying to, what they're trying to get at. Um, so 
that's really um that's really it. I mean, this is gonna be our answer. I wish I had a better explanation for that, but um yeah, that's uh that's all I can say about that. So the answer is actually C, and it's not again D again, all the rest could technically be all the rest could be true, it just doesn't have to be true. The only the only this is the only one that has to surely be true for this problem. So there you go. I hope that helps. But let me know if you have questions on this or need some feedback. Thank you.